Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday, October the 21st, 2020, and you have joined the Wednesday night video from Park Street Christian Church here in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. My name is Steve Altide. It's my privilege to serve here as the senior minister. Let's pray as we start this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for the abilities you've given us to, to read and to listen. And we um, want to use those senses that you created us with to um, draw near to you, to learn more about you. And I pray that what we share in tonight is helpful to that end, that uh, every one of us can stay, take a step closer to being the person you want us to be in Christ um, that we need all the help we can get. We want to be closer every day than the day before. And so I pray that this can assist in that, that journey. Thank you again for your word. And I pray in Jesus, the living word. Amen. I'm going to share tonight a piece that was written by my friend Victor Knowles of Peace on Earth Ministries in Joplin, Missouri. Victor, um, few years older than I am, but he's a fellow Iowegian originally, and um, he attended college in uh, Ottumwa, Iowa, in a school there years ago called Midwestern School of Evangelism, that people in my part of the world are mostly familiar with. But uh, Victor's got a dynamic ministry that he's led for years at uh, a unity movement of getting uh, Christians together to be um, in agreement on the truth of Scripture and to um, not be divided um, senselessly over silly things. And he's done a lot of good work in that that area for a lot of years, given his life to it, really. He's a prolific writer and, and he's written a number of books and very gifted with words. And I must share something that was in his Knowles letter from back uh, earlier this month of October called Glorifying God in an Ungodly Culture. So uh, make sure you have a pad and pencil or pen so you can write down some scripture references. You have the advantage you can pause the video and and uh, or go back and really listen to parts of it to, catch things that you miss. I try to repeat the references so that you can get those down. Um, but in case you don't get them, you can still go back and replay the video or the portion you missed or need to catch up on. But again, this is titled Glorifying God in an Ungodly Culture. To glorify someone, he writes, means to bestow honor, praise, and admiration on them. In our present culture, people tend to glorify celebrities, athletes, or even politicians. Yet many of them are unworthy of such honor because of their ungodly lives. In ancient Rome, the people exchanged the glory of God for images made to look like mortal men and even animals, according to the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1, verse 22. That's Romans 1, verse 22. They also exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and they worship created things rather than the Creator in Romans 1.25. Romans 1.25. Corinth was another wicked city filled with sexual immorality. The Apostle Paul found it necessary to remind the Christians in that city, uh, you are not your own, for you are bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. And of course, that's from 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. Some translations add, and in your spirit. Glorify God in your body and your spirit. But that's again 1 Corinthians 6.20. A sinful and ungodly culture refuses to glorify God. C.S. Lewis wrote, A man can no more diminish God's glory by refusing to worship him than a lunatic can put out the sun by scribbling the word darkness on the walls of his cell. It is left to the people of God to bring God glory in times like these, even when it looks like uh, complete lunacy is on the loose. We don't, if we don't glorify God, no one else will, he writes. David prayed in Psalm 43, verse 1. 
Psalm 43, verse 1, plead my case against an ungodly nation. And boy, that's appropriate today, isn't it? So what is the chief end of man, Victor asked. That was the first question in a series of questions set forth to young people in 1642 when a document called the Westminster Shorter Catechism was put together. The answer was to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Long before this question was asked, David asked, or said rather, <clears throat> David said, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart I will glorify your name forever. And that's Psalm 86, verse 12. Psalm 86, verse 12. In fact, David foretold a time when all of the nations <clears throat> that you have made, God, shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. And that again is in Psalm 86, verse 9 and 10. Psalm 86, verse 9 and 10. Only God and his son Jesus are worthy of such glorification and praise. Read John 17, verse 1. John's gospel, John 17, verse 1. When God sent Jesus to save the world, you're familiar with this, I'm sure. Angels sang, glory to God in the highest in Luke 2, 14, Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Some shepherds near Bethlehem, after seeing for themselves a long way to Messiah, returned, returned to their jobs of being shepherds, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard, according to Luke 2, 20. <coughs> Luke 2, 20. Jesus healed many people, causing them to glorify God. And here's a number of references, a few. Luke 5, 25 and 26. That's Luke 5, 25 and 26. Luke 7, verse 16. Luke 7, 16. Luke 13, 13. That's Luke 13, 13. Luke 18, 43. Luke 18, verse 43. The one exception, he continues, was when Jesus healed ten lepers, but only one of them returned to glorify God with a loud voice, according to Luke 17, 15. Luke 17, verse 15. And Victor asked a question, or makes a statement, I wonder if that same percentage holds true today. I'm still stunned when we read that that when the seven bowls of God's wrath were poured out on the land, people continued to curse the name of God and refused to repent for their sins and glorify him, according to Revelation 16, verse 9. Revelation 16, 9. This shows how stiff-necked and bullheaded sinful man really is. However, he says, our good behavior can actually cause some to glorify, uh, give glory to, to God. Jesus said in Matthew 5.16, Matthew 5.16, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So people are watching and listening to see how we react in the, to the times in which we live. Peter said, Live such good lives among the pagans, among unbelievers, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. And that is in 1 Peter 2, verse 12. 1 Peter 2, verse 12. Peter also said, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. And that's in 1 Peter 4, 16. 1 Peter 4, verse 16. And Victor says, these are words to remember in times like these. And then his last paragraph in this piece reads, From Rome to wherever you call home, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's Romans 14. Verse 5 and 6. Romans chapter 14, verse 5 and 6. And to that I say, Amen and Amen.
Let's pray. Father, we too want to join the multitudes of others around the world to join with one ver one voice uh, to glorify you, to honor you, to praise you. And we want to serve you uh, all the rest of our days, however many days they those may be. We don't know what is coming our way in the future or uh, we have lots of questions about those kinds of things. But one thing we can go to bed tonight confident of is you are already there. You have everything figured out. You're going to supply what we need every step every day. And um, you're never caught off guard by anything that takes place here. Sometimes we lose perspective and we we need to have the right balance of of concern and and being prayerful about those concerns and yet trusting you that you are ultimately in charge um, even if it looks like everything's out of control. We have complete confidence. You're a complete God of integrity, perfect integrity, complete faithfulness to your purposes, and we just trust you to work everything out in your time. So help us to be committed to glorifying you in this very ungodly culture. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You have a blessed night and a good rest of your week.